So in this video, I want to talk about two processes that make changes to the antibody genes. And they take both place in the germinal center during B cell maturation. And so the number one process is somatic hypermutation that I want to talk about. And then we're also going to talk about class switch recombination. So here you can recognize this Y-shaped antibody molecule. And it consists out of a heavy chain, which is drawn here in dark blue, and a light chain in light blue. So you're also going to recognize the variable region, which I've drawn here in purple, and then the constant region in yellow. So let's start talking first about somatic hypermutation. So as the name already implies, we're talking here about mutations. So there are rapid single base pair changes introduced into the variable region of the antibody. And that means that affects both the heavy chain and the light chain, because both make this variable region. So the consequence of this hypermutations is that it makes a change in the affinity of the antibody. And this is very important because you want to make an antibody that holds on strong to an antigen. Otherwise, it's going to fall off and it cannot exert its function. So what does class switch recombination do to the antibody? As the name implies, you switch the antibody class. The antibody class is defined by the heavy chain isotype. So this has nothing to do with the light chain. So this only affects the heavy chain. Because only the heavy chain determines the antibody class. So a virgin B cell is going to just make the antibody class that is first in line. And here so you can see the gene of the variable region of the heavy chain. And the first in line is the mu and the delta chain. So it's going to make IgM and IgD first. So the class switch recombination is driven by an enzyme complex, which mediates this recombination. And this is a recombinase. And this recombinase is always going to make two cuts and then recombine the DNA. So the first cut is fixed, and the first cut always happens right before the mu and delta chain. The second cut is dependent on the cytokines that are around in the germinal center and are produced from the T follicular helper cell. The second cut can occur either right before the gamma chain, right before the epsilon chain, or right before the alpha chain. So let's suppose you're going to have a lot of interferon gamma around. So the recombination enzyme will always cut here. And if there's interferon gamma around, it's going to make a cut here. Then these two spots are going to recombine. And so the gene is going to exist out of the variable region. And then the next in line would be the gamma chain. So you're going to get the IgG isotype. If there's a lot of TGF beta around, for example, you're going to get the first cut again here. And then the second cut is going to be here. So there is recombination and you're going to cut out all this chunk here in between these two spots. And so you're going to read the variable region. And then the next constant region that is in line would be the alpha chain. So you're going to get the IgA isotype. So that means that these cytokines that are produced by the T-friendly helper cell are going to determine which kind of isotype you're going to get. And the T follicular helper cell produces a cytokine depending on where the pathogen was found. So obviously we want to make the antibody that fa best fits to get rid of the pathogen. So if the pathogen was detected in the spleen or non-mucosal lymph node, the T follicular helper cell is going to make interferon gamma to get IgG. And IgG is our most broad spectrum antibody that can exert a lot of different effective function and also gets into peripheral tissue. If the pathogen was detected in mucosal lymph nodes, we want to make IgA because IgA is this antibody that can be secreted into mucosal tissue and can help clear the infection there very efficiently. If we were infected with an helmet in mucosal tissue, the T follicular helper cell would make some extra IL-4 to get IgE. IgE is very good in the defense against parasites because it coats mast cells and eosinophils and then they degranulate their content onto the parasites 
that eventually is gonna kill them. This concludes the video on somatic hypermutation and class switch recombination.